Somebody forgot to paint this $1,500 statue. <laughs> Can't be that hard. That's what she said. Welcome to the Extreme Channel. My name is Mr. X. And today we are reviewing this custom 1 4th scale Logan soldier piece. But before we review him, let's do a little time traveling and watch him get assembled. Sit tight. Before we put this bitch together, let's go ahead and take a look at the box. So standard box, tiny little bit of an art box on top here. Here is layer one of the foam. Traditional custom black foam. And then here you have layer number two. So now we're gonna assemble this guy. Uh, it comes in a number of pieces. Check it out right here how many different pieces there actually are. If you include the claws, you're probably north of 30. Then after we get them assembled, we're gonna do a close-up review like we traditionally do. Obviously, we will leave out paint, but we will talk about, uh, you know, not only the obviousness that a kit is an unpainted statue, but the difference between getting a uh, kit or getting a painted statue. All right, so first we'll start with the bottom torso here. Insert his shoes, pretty long uh, pegs here. I'm not sure if there's any magnets in this statue. I think there are, but uh, long pegs on his boots as well. Slide in pretty nicely. Um, next, we'll go ahead and do all of his accessories. Now, right on here, I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, different keyholes here, and they're all different sizes, so I assume you can't intermix. Some of them are pretty obvious, like the gun right here. Nice tight fit. Larger canteen. On the side here. It's kind of like uh, that one's decently loose. Putting uh, pegs and holes, large pouch on the back. Probably would have been smarter to do the torso first in case it hits any of these. But we're going to keep going. If only it had directions. That one right in the back there, another pouch. Another pouch on the front here. Yeah, we're actually gonna put it in the torso now, just in case. There we go. More pouches on the side. And that one's actually a little bit loose, so I wonder if these two are backwards. Appears they were. And then we have the grenades. Now one of my grenades, the uh, pin did come broken. So that is what it is. Here's a picture of that really quick. Now we're getting to the point where uh, it's actually, we need to decide on the switch outs. So many different switch outs on this piece. We'll start with his helmeted head with a cigar. And we can go on his right arm. This probably is a magnet. Whoa. And we just lost his cigar. We may never see it again. We'll steal another cigar here. Or we'll just wait till the end to put that in. Actually, that's a smarter move. Now with his right hand, you pretty much have two options. Uh, one is for the bone claws. There's uh, bigger slits in the uh, hand. Here's a picture of the comparison between the two. 
Now one thing about the bone claws, they do not seem to stick, so uh, I think you need to glue those in, which I'm not prepared to do at this time, which is kind of unfortunate. So I guess we're going to display him with the metal claws, which are real metal, kind of nice. And those do have a snug fit, I think. Maybe too snug of a fit, I can't even get uh, it in. That's what she said. Now when you see close-ups though, the bone claws are awesome. They're, they are actually made of metal with a uh, coating around them uh, to simulate the bone. All right, hopefully these stay in. Good magnet there. Uh, now with his right arm, I don't know if we can display both rifles. There's actually two different rifles. And that answers that, we cannot. So with this one, it is this rifle right here. And it's a little loose, so that's scary. Uh, another one on this, you actually have to insert the finger over the trigger. It's a separate piece that keys in. So a little bit of a seam line that uh, whoever paints this for you, probably permanently attach that I would. And you also have the choice on the right hand to display uh, fists uh, alone, which we'll look at with design and the switch outs. But uh, let me get a cigar back in. Maybe it's the wrong cigar. Two different cigars, so I assume, there we go. And the helmet on the ground, which we'll talk about during design. And then you have his ammo clips, which I believe just sit on the ground. Wrong. Man. I might look at some reference pictures before we jump in. But uh, that is it. All right, let's start with this review. Now that he's assembled, we're gonna jump into the extreme review. We're gonna talk about the background information. We're gonna do some close-ups. We're gonna rate him on the scale. At the end of this video, we're gonna do, from moving forward, from now on, anytime at the end of the video, I'm gonna do just uh, camera close-ups with the pieces. Uh, also at the end of the video, I'll, I'll show you his temporary uh, display space. But let's jump right in, and there's a lot to cover with this guy. As I said, he's a custom, so it's a private commission. It means somebody had an idea, they hired a sculptor, they uh, eventually got the digital sculpt done, it was printed with a prototype, and then they sent them out. Now they only did kits for this, so kits are unpainted statues, which we're gonna talk about more when we get to the paint. Usually with a custom piece, they make less than 100, and that is not the exception here. I think the addition size was like 60 on this. I don't know for sure, because this is actually an artist proof an AP and they are AAPs. I just, I don't know why I got an AP, but they sent me an AP, which is autographed by the sculptor Franco Carlissimo, who is not only one of my favorite sculptors, but just an awesome guy in general. Uh, I think that's the third or fourth autograph I have from him. I'll put him on eBay if you want his autograph. But uh, yeah, so really excited to have this piece. It's rare. Cost on this guy was about 1,200 euro, I believe, which uh, is equivalent to about 1,500 US and then a couple hundred bucks uh, shipping from China. So he was a very expensive piece. And this is one of the reasons I don't like kits, which we're gonna talk about more. Some people love them. Uh, it's 15 and a half inches wide, but uh, the cost with shipping and painting just gets skyrocketing. I'm really trying to get out of kits as much as possible. 15 inches deep. And he is just a little over 20 and a half inches tall, give or take. So first thing we're gonna talk about with this piece is concept. And this is such a badass concept. I don't know why anyone hasn't done it for such a long time. But right here, you have Logan or Wolverine and he is in a war. We don't know if this is World War II or World War I. Someone who knows better about uh, guns might be able to tell me based on the gun. 
And on the ground there is mud and tank tracks and ammunition clips and bullet casings and it is a helmet you'll see and we're going to talk more about that. Uh, and you move up him, he's in army fatigues, army boots, army clothes. He is fully decked out. He has a whole bunch of weapons, which we're going to talk about as well. Um, and he is just badass. There's tons of different display options. He's got a wife beater on. He's got his uh, dog tags, a few different pos uh, poses you put him in. Four different head portraits. And he is fierce. He's Wolverine. He is badass. Now, initially, a few people had uh, problems with this concept. Number one is, if this is really that time period, he probably shouldn't have metal claws yet. But as you saw in the uh, assembly, there are bone claw options, so you don't have to get your panties in a bunch. Second big issue people have with this concept is why does Wolverine need a rifle or grenades or anything like that? Well, I don't know about you, but if I can kill someone from 30 feet away as opposed to getting right next to them, probably a, an easier thing to do. So I like the fact that you can incorporate the guns, the grenades, or you can choose not to do the gun with some of the switch out options. You can do just claws if you want. But it makes sense because when Wolverine is injured, it hurts him. Um, he has nerve endings just like you and I do. So there is pain with that. So it makes more sense for him to try and kill someone for, with a gun if possible. But I love it. I think it's really awesome. It's a museum pose. So he's just uh, standing there for a museum. and. Honestly, I think the concept is an X. It's a five out of five. Really unique. As I said, I can't believe someone else hasn't done this yet. Next, we're gonna talk about design. And when with design, we talk about displayability, switch outs, um, engineering issues, anything like that. And I think most of the stuff is good on here, but uh, I'll start with some of the negatives that you saw during the unboxing. This, uh, magnet on the torso isn't very strong. So both arms, uh, switch outs, which we're gonna look at, are a little bit loose, that's scary. Um, everything else, there doesn't seem to be any bad seam lines. There was some smart design where for his uh, hands, he has gloves, so that covers up a wrist seam line since there are switch outs with the hands. Uh, these guys, they go somewhere, I think they go on his body. I haven't figured it out yet. Let me actually pause the video now so I can look at a reference. All right, so with the ammo, I did find out that you can actually drape it. There are connection pieces, I see that now. You can drape it around his neck. I'll show you really quick here. And I was just looking at some photos. I don't think I like it that much. So I personally will probably not do this. Uh, I kind of like him hanging out on the base because there is some open room on the base, which I think is a little bit of a negative. But it does conform to his body quite well. There we go. So that is a display option. Let's talk about the other display options. He has four different portraits. First, here is kind of the mean Wolverine. No helmet on, no cigar, baring his teeth. And we'll look at each of these when we get to sculpt. And here is more of a smug Wolverine, mouth closed. Here is an unhelmeted Wolverine with his cigar, and you have to display his cigar in this, otherwise there's this big weird hole in his mouth. And here is the helmeted Wolverine with a cigar as well. For other switch out options, on the right hand you can either display the metal claws like I have now, or here is a picture of the bone claws on the table. The bone claws, as I said, would actually fall out if uh, I had them hanging from his hand. And they are very long. On his left hand, you have quite a, a different number of options. So the first is where it's hanging down to the side here. And he is holding the gun. Now also, you have two other options with his arm hanging to the side and they both include the claws. One is with the metal claws like this. And the other is with the bone claws that of course, here's another picture of it on the table. 
Or you can switch out where he is holding the gun up close to his chest and he has his finger on the trigger. And if you didn't want him to hold the gun, he could actually be a fist with his claws, both claw options, of course. I'll just show you the metal claws here. But this looks badass too. This is almost like, come and get me, bub. There also is a helmet on the ground that you must have, otherwise there's this large uh, uh, keyhole. And a few people initially, I know they were talking, it's like if you display the helmeted portrait, then there's another helmet on the ground. Well, that could be somebody else's helmet that he just killed. I don't, so that doesn't really bother me at all. Um, one thing though, the base sticks out quite a bit. I like the fact they added this tire track, which we'll see during the sculpt. So initially I was like, it didn't need to be that large, but his gun's sticking out that far anyway, if you display it like this, which I kind of like. This is kind of a, a more laid back pose, if you could, if you would. So uh, the base itself is extremely heavy. Uh, it's, it's very, very heavy. The rest of the statue is, is normal um, weight. Really no other issues I can think of. So I think the design is, is fantastic. It's not perfect because of some of that, those issues with the uh, uh, claws you're gonna have to glue in and then the uh, how light this magnet is. So I think the design is a W, it's a four out of five. Especially with all the different switch out options you can do, it almost makes me wanna have two of these. Which leads us into our next category of paint. So really quick here, my God, look at this. Paint sucks, man. It's definitely trash. Of course not. As I said, this is a kit. So the reason I ordered a kit on this one was actually for two reasons, which we're going to talk about. But before we do that, I want to talk about the differences between getting a kit or a painted statue. So traditionally with licensed pieces, it's almost always painted because that licensing entity, such as Marvel or whoever that is, has to sign off on the color scheme. With custom, if you go painted, there's some pros and some negatives. So first of all, some of the pros are that obviously it's a lot cheaper, um, which we're gonna talk about when we get to the kit aspect of it. It's a lot cheaper. You don't have to worry about uh, deciding the art direction on your own. Uh, you don't have to pay for shipping multiple times. The negative of that is you pretty much have to go in the direction the commissioner decides, the art director decides. Uh, you have to rely on the uh, factory painters, which may be good or may not be good. You have to uh, acknowledge there might be some QC issues. Um, and this isn't with a custom piece. It's not like Sideshow. If you get it and you don't like it, you can't send it back and get your money back. You, you kind of have to stick with it. Going with the kit though, you get to decide that artistic direction. You can decide uh, if you want it uh, like a traditional piece or if you want it very different and yours will be 100% unique. Those are the huge advantages. The huge negatives are cost and time. So first of all, you would have to usually pay an extra anywhere from $100 to $300 shipping to get it to a painter. That's a additional shipping. Second of all, a good painter for a piece like this is going to be an absolute minimum of $600 US. And that's a very, very minimum. And it could go up until $1,200 US. So some big negatives. now. The reason I got him as a kit, I hate kits, I'm trying to get out of them, but a lot of the best pieces like this are only offering, being offered as kits now. The reason I got out of him is I actually ordered another Logan uh, soldier that was coming as painted. Check it out right here. And after this was being shipped to me, I found out that this project was canceled. So now I do want them painted and I have it here and I'm gonna to have to pay for extra shipping and I'm screwed anyway, but sometimes we make mistakes. But for now, he'll stay in the, my collection as an unpainted kit because this could be a statue. I know it's a statue, but it could be a statue of a statue. What I mean by that is maybe this is Logan from World War II and he was a hero, so they created a statue of him. So he's gonna go in my Wolverine display, which you'll see at the end, as a statue. And I actually have another kit coming that I'm going to keep as a statue for a lot of the same reasons, uh, including cost, because this right here is a Samurai Wolverine piece. And to get it painted, it is so detailed, it's gonna take so many hours for a painter to do. Cost to paint that guy is gonna be 
12 to 1300 minimum. And a lot of you are thinking, man, this is a one fourth scale statue. Usually those cost half of it. And you're saying just the paint job minus the shipping and the initial cost of the statue. So yeah, initially when you go with kits like this, you might be a minimum of $2,000 in, if not 3000 by the time it's all said and done. So from a real resale standpoint, you're gonna be lucky to make your money back. But the more I look at this piece, I don't think I'll ever sell it because it's awesome. And that's how we're gonna talk about Sculpt today because this is just phenomenally done. Now, one unique thing, this is uh, Wolverine done by Franco. And I have a number of Wolverines done by Franco, not only in my collection, but on order. And he has a very uh, specific style with his face, not only with Wolverines, but you could show me a Franco face sculpt of any character and I wouldn't know that the sculptor is Franco uh, without, without you telling me, but looking at the face sculpt, I would know. Uh, he has this very specific face sculpt with his Wolverines that I really dig and, and he's just amazing at details and he's a beast. He can do it in like 20 seconds. Now, as we look at the close-ups of this, and talk about the different aspects of it. And again, at the end, I'll show video of it. Um, you're gonna see that a lot of the details may seem lacking if you're not used to looking at kits because paint does a lot with the statue. So, fair warning. Let's jump right in. Take a look at this base. So one thing you really can't tell here is the mud aspect of it. Um, you can't tell how good it's gonna be because the paint is not on it. But you can see all the different indentions and uh, not very much texture because it's not really rock, which makes sense to me. I love these tracks though. So first it looks like some tire tracks. Great design on these. I like how it pushes the mud to the side. And then some other tracks where a lot of his casing sitting right underneath uh, Logan are. Some bullet casings. Take a look at the helmet with the strap. A little bit of wear on that. What would be kind of cool actually if they painted the helmet with uh, an axis. Symbolize this is World War II. And you can think, it's, it could be Vietnam. Who knows what war this actually was. I don't know when Wolverine was born. Let's look at his boots. I love these Army Fatigue boots. There's awesome stitching on it. There's some cool texture. Uh, not much. Uh, the laces look great. Some folds in them and almost as cool as his pants. There's a little bit of imperfection I see on mine, but uh, not only is there a ton of texture, but the folds and creases, some seams running up the sides. You can see a few areas where they're ripped and the painter can do whatever he wants with that. He could put some blood in there, which traditionally I don't like too much blood on Wolverine unless you actually see an open gash because he heals quickly. See some pouches on the side. The stitching on this is awesome. This is one of the reasons I'm okay with keeping this as a kit because it still looks phenomenal. Take a look at his utility belt and the pouches. Phenomenally done. Every part of it, the belt itself, the pouches, the buttons, the straps. You see the ammo clip and the canteen, the grenades. Look at his wife beater, phenomenally done. Again, I like uh, the texture on it. The same things I like about the pants, I like here, but it's done differently. The rips, and now you really start to see that Wolverine anatomy, and I think this is the perfect Wolverine anatomy. He is very fit, very buff, but he's not roided out. And right above his wife beater, you see his dog tags. They do say Logan on them. You can see that detail. The print on this is phenomenal. And underneath that, you start to see his chest and his hair, his chest hair sculpted in. Take a look at his shoulders. A lot of the same stuff, the musculature, the hair. As you move down his arms, you start to see uh, a lot of veins. It's very veiny, that's what she said. And uh, it's interesting, more so on one than the other, but a lot of detail in his um, muscles and arms. And it looks, a little, it looks a little weird unpainted, to be honest with you like his elbows. Great sculpt on his hands and the gloves. Here's some close-ups of the claws. So first you have the metal claws, they look fantastic. And here's another close-up of the bone claws. The bone claws are actually longer. They're probably about three quarters or a quarter of an inch to a third of an inch longer, which I don't know if I like them longer, to be honest with you. 
but I, I, I can really see these coming to life after a great paint job. I've seen a few examples already. Let's take a look at his uh, gun. So first the one he's holding, there are two different types of guns and I'm not a uh, uh, old gun guy. I know modern guns, but I don't own any of these. You can see so much detail in the working mechanisms of them. Here's the other one. Let's start with his portrait with the helmet on. I like this one. I like the expression on it. It's very, I don't want to be here. I'm badass. Who else do I have to kill? The cigar is classic Logan. And this is where if you're not um, big into kits, this is where you're going to really be looking at it being like, this looks strange to me. But this is what your statue looks like before it's painted. So you lose a lot of that detail, but you can still see the uh, musculature in the face. Look at the hair. The hair on him is done. This is probably the best Wolverine hair I've ever seen. And then check out the helmet. He's got some ammo in it, the band around it. This really makes me think more World War II than, than Vietnam, but I could be wrong. Let's check out the portrait with the cigar without the helmet. And right here, it's very, very similar, but a tiny bit different. Uh, really just above the eyes, but it's very, very similar. And the hair is uh, fantastic, just like uh, in the previous portrait. And then right here, this portrait right here with his mouth closed, again, I think it's almost the exact same portrait. I see a few tiny differences. Obviously where the mouth is, he doesn't seem as upset with his eyes. And here's some close-ups of the hair to kind of show you what I was talking about. The print on this is awesome. And when I say print, I mean from the factory, when they're actually uh, creating the statues from the uh, mold. And let's look at his last portrait. I think the one thing missing is, instead of the previous portrait we just looked at, I, I would have liked to have an open mouth. I always love an open mouth Wolverine with him kind of screaming, so it would, you know, embolize on the uh, statue, hey, I just killed a bunch of you, one more step up. And this is a different expression, not only around the mouth, obviously, with the teeth showing, but his eyes, they actually look a little uneven purposefully. So I think this is one of the best Wolverine statues ever made. I really do. Uh, let's grade the sculpt on it. Obviously, there won't be a grade for the paint, but uh, sculpt is an X. It's a no-brainer. And one of the things, when we talked about paint, if you have a statue of this caliber, you kind of want uh, a professional painter as opposed to factory paint because it, it emphasizes it that much more that this is a grail and amazing piece. Let's talk about value on this piece. So uh, 1500 plus with shipping for an unpainted statue, it's gonna cost me probably another thousand to get it painted. That sucks, that's really tough. Um, with value, the only thing I, th I think that I can get my money back in the end, um, you know, statues above $2,000 are traditionally uh, what we call grails or some of them that are even three or four or even more. So people rarely buy them. It's harder to sell, but I do think this is sellable at that price. Um, I think the only reason you get a, a one or two, a T or U uh, grade is if you're going to lose money on the statue, like pop culture shock toys. So I don't think I'll lose money on this, but otherwise it's, it's hard to swallow um, $2,000 to $3,000 for a statue this size that's not as elaborate. So on value on this, I think it's right in the middle. It's V, very nice. And I think that affects the uh, overall score a little bit too, to be honest with you. Um, if I was all in for $1,500 on this, uh, or even 2,000, but I think it's gonna be 2,500 to 3,000. I think I could give him a score of an X, but I can't, but I can give him a score of a rail, a four out of five overall score on this. Concept is amazing. Sculpt is out of this world. And I'm one of those people, I have, I, I think about seven or eight statues that have been professionally painted, probably closer to 10. There is a huge difference, without a doubt, than factory paint. Um, 
times two, I mean, easily. So there is value in that, and I am a big believer you get what you pay for. But uh, awesome, awesome piece. Uh, so excited that I have them, especially since the other project was canceled. Uh, this one's gonna be hard to beat with this concept. So I don't even know if that other con uh, piece would have beat this. Uh, it was totally different, but uh, love it. Thanks guys for watching. Stay tuned uh, for a picture of where he's displayed at, as well as some video close-ups of this guy. And uh, I will talk to you tomorrow. Take care. Previously on X-Men.